In this video, I will cover managing iOS in Cisco routers and switches. This slide set was found on the Cisco NetACAD or Cisco Network Academy um, materials. And this is a broad overview of managing uh, iOS images. And I thought maybe some of you will find this uh, useful, so decided to post to my YouTube channel. So the first thing we're gonna look at is upgrading iOS on switch. Upgrade switch iOS using TFTP, also known as Trivial File Transfer Protocol. So occasional upgrades are needed either for increased functionality or bug fixes. So a TFTP server is required and uh, several free versions are available. Uh, those includes the SolarWinds, the uh, TFTP uh, open server, Spicework, etc., etc. So in this example, we would be uh, we will be using the SolarWind. A working Ethernet connection is required between the switch and the TFTP server. So the whatever the switch that you are trying to uh, upgrade and the TFTP server should have a working Ethernet connection. And in this example, we will be using 192.168.1.1. 1 slash 24 on the TFTP server and 192.168.1.2 slash 24 on the switch VLAN 1 because that VLAN 1 is the one we're going to use for the upgrade process. So before you begin the transfer, uh, you need to make sure your TFTP server has started. So to do that, what you do actually, you go and open the, your TFTP server configuration and you're gonna make sure in this example, the solar wind TFTP server, you're gonna make sure that the service says started. And you need to make sure the iOS file is in the TFTP server directory. And then you should always ping between the server and the switch because this, is, this will make sure that you have a connection between the TFTP server and the switch. Otherwise, you will be going, go, going back and trying to troubleshoot issues if there is an issue or a delay in upgrade. So the first thing we should do is make sure that the connection is there. So in terms of starting the file transfer, uh, you need to make sure there is enough space for the new iOS uh, in the switch. So we will uh, leave the old one in the switch for now So and then add that new uh, iOS on top of the switch uh, flash memory, um, whatever uh, available flash memory, uh, you know, with the current running iOS. So to do that, what we're going to do, we're going to go into the Cisco switch and we're going to issue the command uh, show flash or sh flash. And that will give you the information about the available space uh, and the included uh, uh, files uh, within it. So what really important here is this too, you need to make sure that there is enough space for the new iOS to be loaded on top of the current iOS there because we are not gonna just delete the iOS and then install the uh, new iOS. We're gonna load it first and then install it, right? So keep that in mind. So we need to have enough space in there. So this is the command we're gonna use to do that. And using a simple uh, sign syntax, uh, the uh, copy is uh, started. So you can try copy TFTP flash. So that's the command that we're gonna use uh, to connect to the TFTP server, which contain our new iOS image. So in here uh, by show flash, we check whether, whether there is enough space. So once it's good to go, we're gonna issue copy TFTP flash and that will give you some options uh, associated with that command. So in this case, uh, for example, we need to know where the TFTP server is. So we, our TFTP server for this example is located at 192.168.1.1 and it is up and running. So when you enter that, they're gonna ask you, okay, now we know the host uh, where I need to look for that server, uh, give me the file name, source file name. So we, this is the file name for this new uh, Cisco iOS file. So we're gonna issue that and then we gonna uh, they're gonna ask you the destination file name. So in this case, uh, if we don't care, uh, you know what file name gonna be associated with the new Cisco iOS image within this uh, Cisco switch we are trying to install, which can simply press enter. So what that's gonna do is whatever the file name at the source gonna be the same file name that gonna be downloaded onto your uh, switch. 
in that case we just press enter here so then there they will show you that they're accessing that tftp server right here and then it'll show you that the vlan one was able to access that and then uh, download that information so that's how you're going to download it so again these are the command options available to you once you enter copy tftp flash so now the switch has two different ios uh, binaries in flash uh, because we have just loaded a new one uh, by accessing the TFTP server. So after, on the previous slide, after this um, downloading from the TFTP has been uh, completed on the switch one, as you can see, 122-55 uh, is now in here, 122-55, see, because this is the old image and this is the new image. So by default, the first one listed will boot. So if you go, uh, check the flash memory on that switch again and you see these two images with the including the new one we, we just downloaded whatever the image that is listed at the first will be the one that will be booting uh, by default so this would cause the old ios to boot in this particular case because the old ios image is listed first and the new one is listed afterward, right? So we can tell the switch or router to boot a particular iOS with the boot system command uh, because um, that's the whole point of loading a new image, right? You don't want the old image to be loaded. You want to have a specific image uh, to be loaded when the switch starts. So to do that, what we're gonna do, you're gonna go into the configuration mode, uh, config T or uh, config uh, terminal and then you're gonna issue the boot system and then you're gonna say, hey, the uh, iOS that you should be using to load this switch would be this new one. So we're gonna issue this command. So the boot system flash, because that's where the location is. And then we're gonna give you the give it the image name of the new one. So in this case, uh, it is gonna be 122-55 image. And then we're gonna issue that command. And once you do that, now the switch knows that it has to load this new image instead of the old one, right? So that's how you're gonna make sure or assign the image that you need for booting on your Cisco, uh, on your Cisco switch. So then um, the new iOS has been loaded. Uh, you can reboot uh, your uh, switch. So once the re uh, reboot has happened, uh, you can issue the command shver or show version. Uh, that show version or sh uh, command will list uh, the information related to the current version which is running on your switch. So in here, after we have rebooted, it's showing the file system image. It's a new one, which is 122-55 uh, 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 option. And you can see that right here where it says system image file list, and it'll give you what is being loaded. So now we know it is uh, being loaded. So if you see the old image showing up here, you just have to go back and rerun this command and make sure you save it as well. You can run copy running uh, config, but you don't have to because we are just basically changing the entire iOS and you need to just make sure that this is actually uh, being properly entered. And once it is done, you should have this showing up once you run the show version command. missing ios on a switch so there's worst case scenarios right uh, that would be the the switch uh, you know get, have no ios at all the, the ios is completely gone so if the switch is still running in this situation please do not power it down at this point the best option you have is to use a tftp uh, um, and uh, as we mentioned in the previous slides and illustrated on the previous slide and use that TFTP server to reload a new, uh, a download a new Cisco iOS image to this switch and then uh, load it onto uh, uh, the switch as the uh, default iOS version. So if, if you have the switch actually running right now and all the Cisco iOS images are deleted by mistake, do not power it off instead just access your tftp server from the switch download it and use it as the uh, default ios the erase flash command may have uh, been issued in error and it can uh, you know it does happen you know the erase flash will completely wipe those 
uh, iOS images and that's the command that may uh, cause this kind of issue. So if the switch was power off, however, so if, if there's a situation there is a switch was power off, uh, this is the result, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is the result you wouldn't go, would get uh, in the next power on uh, situation. So if the switch is not power off, just reload it. That's the easiest option. But if the switch is power off, when you power back on, this is the image you're going to get. You're going to get done initialization flash and you're going to say error loading whatever the, uh, the default um, Cisco iOS at that time of uh, the switch was configured uh, and it's gonna say uh, you know it has interrupted and it has failed to load flash this is what you're gonna get but as I mentioned if the switch is not power off please don't power off just go back and, and install the Cisco I iOS image from your uh, TFTP server and then you can load it and good to go but in, if it is power off this is the screen you are gonna see so in most situations I assume you're gonna end up in a uh, place where you power, somebody power down the switch and realize the uh, Cisco iOS image is missing. So let's see how we can fix that. So breathe, you're okay, it's okay. Your switch may or may not automatically initialize when the flash power up, but that's okay. If you get to the unable to uh, start flash message, you will just need to initiate the flash and there will be a reminder displayed on the uh, flash int command and that will uh, you know tell you that you know uh, you know whether the issue clearly displayed on your CLI so don't don't panic even if you power down the switch don't panic there is a way to fix it and this is how you fix it so we like we may not be able to see the flash memory on the switch so you will get some message something like this unable uh, to flash that and if not initialize uh, uh, flash using the flash in command as i mentioned uh, you know that there are ways to get around this as well so the tftp is not available in this case and uh, you will actually transfer the ios file through the serial port or console connection using x m o d e m so if you end up in this particular situation what you need to do is to uh, use the uh, ios file transfer through the serial port or console connection because why? Because you can't connect to your TFTP server now because you have rebooted the switch without the iOS and the capabilities of connecting to a TFTP server has now been lost. But don't worry, breathe. We are gonna show you how you can fix it. So, so not the modem, uh, just the protocol. So, so remember uh, the console connection is running at 9600 bit per second. So the transferring a nine megabyte of iOS at the rate uh, it will take over two hours. So in this situation, unlike the TFTP server, it is running at 9600 bit per second uh, and trying to transfer it gonna take a long, long time. So, however, you can speed it up. So to do that, uh, in this situation, we can uh, speed up by increasing the BAUD rate on the switch and this should bring it down to around 15 minutes uh, from having two hours. So what you need to do is you need to, um, in on the Cisco switch, you're going to do set BAUD and you're going to increase that amount. In this case, it is uh, 115,200. So 115,200 and that would bring down that two hour uh, iOS image transfer rate uh, to down to just 15 minutes. Because remember, we don't have the TFTP because we have rebooted the switch and it lost all uh, capabilities of connecting to TFTP and lost the iOS image and everything. And this is what one way we can do it. But however, because the transfer rate is 9600 bytes per second, we're gonna set the BAUD to uh, a large number such as 115,200. And that will bring down the amount of time uh, that it would take to transfer that Cisco iOS image. So then uh, we need to adjust the Terra term to the new speed. So now your serial speed has been changed to 115,200. You have to use the Terra term, which is the, uh, you know, the serial connection um, in, in program that uh, you are familiar with from our previous lectures and, you know, previous demonstrations at this point. Uh, so you are just gonna have to go to setup of the Terra term, go to serial port, because that's how we are connecting now 
to the switch and then you're going to change that to the flow uh, the, the the flow rate the uh, for flow control um, uh, the so, so not the flow control sorry uh, baud rate <laughs> to 115,200 so just gonna change that to 115,200 and why we do it because we set that BAUD to 115,200 on the switch so that we have a fast rate so and once you are done that you can start the transfer so to do that we're gonna issue a command copy x m o d e m and then you're gonna give the flash name and then it's gonna start transferring uh, through the uh, Terra term and uh, you need to tell the Terra term to transfer the file as well because don't use the send file option that doesn't work uh, what you need to do is you need to go to the Terra terms file and you to need to go to transfer and you need to select the X M O D E M and then you're gonna select the send and then you're gonna pick that file and then you're going to issue that copy XM or, uh, XM or DEM and then that file name and that's how it's going to work. So you can't just use the, you know, send file option. Instead, you had to use a transfer XM uh, or DEM on the Terra term and that would uh, initiate the transfer between your uh, console connected uh, computer uh, and the um, your Cisco switch. A good time for coffee break so that would take a while so even 50 minutes is a long time so during this time please do not disconnect your switch and the terra term because it might create more headaches and corruption as well as you need to restart the whole process so during this time just leave it alone and it'll take some time and you'll you'll have a message and sometimes at the very end of the transfer it might take a long time so it'll go maybe fast and then suddenly nothing was happening for the next two to three minutes. Don't disconnect it. Just wait this image, you know, this transfer uh, information, uh, you know, uh, the screen to disappear. Reset the BAUD rate back to 9600. So uh, make sure that once you are done uh, the transfer, you go back to your switch and you reset your uh, BAUD back to the, um, the the default amount which is 9600 and you need to uh, also set your terra term back to 9600 uh, on the baud rate uh, because um, otherwise you know it will be incompatible uh, you don't need that higher rate uh, set on your switch it is actually a bad idea because it use higher cpu rate uh, as well as a higher memory ra rate as well as it might actually cause your switch to bog down so make sure you switch it back to the default rate of 9600 both on the switch as well as the terra term that you will be using in the future to connect to that switch so next what we're going to do we're going to boot the switch so now it has that um, uh, you know new uh, cisco ios image uh, you're going to flash that image uh, as the booting device sorry booting image for this switch so as i indicated which ios to boot in this situation uh, which is right here um, uh, it will definitely going to boot to that ios image however uh, this is not necessary if there is only one ios present in this switch as we have deleted all the ios previously so the boot by itself is okay so you can just simply issue the boot command but just to be safe we have entered boot and that particular ios image we just loaded just to make sure that it is the one that is loading but remember if you have deleted all the ios images and this is why you're using the serial uh, port you just can issue just boot command and that will you know run the only available ios image as the boot image so again you can run the show uh, version command in here we have run the show version command and it clearly shows uh, that we have the new iOS installed and everything good to go. So it is a success. So we have successfully recovered uh, a switch that completely lost all of its iOS images by using that serial uh, and the Terra term. Extracting a tar file to the switch. So there are situations uh, you have uh, tar files, uh, .tar files uh, that contain Cisco IOS images. So uh, what you need to do is uh, in this situation you have to extract uh, that uh, to your uh, switch so that you can <coughs> use it for uh, you know bo uh, for booting process, right? Uh, Cisco IOS. So 
uh, now you have the that um, you know switch that boots you will see uh, you know this kind of image uh, and your Cisco is uh, Cisco switch is working and you will say hey you know you want to uh, start with the configuration uh, uh, in here uh, and in this case we're going to say yes and um, so the switch uh, the only thing uh, in your flash at this point uh, should be the iOS file because we have previously completely nuked your switch because we deleted everything else. So we only have that iOS file that we just loaded right here, right? So now we have to extract this and we need to make sure that it's um, good to go. Uh, so uh, to get the uh, tar file to extract, uh, what you need to do is to the, the tar file for iOS, uh, you want to eventually run on the switch has the iOS image as well as the CMS support files. So there are additional files associated with it. So you will need a CCO account to download uh, this file. So you need to have a Cisco account where you can go ahead and download it and uh, those files. Uh, I will show that on a different video maybe. Uh, I have a f account as well. So you can load a smaller image into the switch via the X modem. Uh, uh, to uh, or XMODEM uh, to speed the install process as all you need to do is to get a working iOS before the loading your uh, production uh, iOS right the only thing you need is that uh, Cisco image so uh, what you need to do is uh, you need to give your switch an address uh, so give your switch a management address uh, so that uh, it can establish a TFTP connection at this point so uh, we're gonna follow the typical Cisco iOS configurations. Um, remember from my previous lectures and modules, I have already gone over multiple times. So in this case, we're gonna use VLAN interface one, which is a default management interface. And we're gonna issue the IP address of 192.168. Sorry, <laughs> the IP address of 1.1.1.2, uh, subnet mask 255255250. So that 1.1.1.2, not 1921. So gonna be the, the uh, excuse me uh, the uh, the management interface IP address and we're gonna issue the no shut command so if you do not issue the no shut command this interface may be administratively down and you won't be able to access for uh, your TFTP connection so make sure you issue that no shut command because a lot of people forget that so what this is gonna do it's gonna assign the IP address of 1.1.1.2255255250 uh, subnet mask to that uh, VLAN one interface and it's going to put that interface into uh, up uh, state so that it is good to go. So the next we're going to go back to your TFTP server and we're going to make sure that the TFTP uh, server IP addresses are assigned according to whatever you want to assign. So in this case it's my code one uh, 255255250 subnet mask with the default gateway of triple one two so one 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 two so make sure your ip address and everything is set up on your tftp server and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the tftp server from your cisco switch so because the vlan uh, interface is now um, configured and the tftp server interface is configured only thing you need to do is first uh, just make sure you can ping that TFTP server so you have a, a proper connection. So then you're going to establish a TFTP server where the tar file is uh, located. So you can establish that connection to that server. And once your connection is uh, established, uh, you would be able to uh, communicate with that server. Uh, so uh, what we need to do next is to format the flash, right? Uh, so, oh no, you need to format the flash. Oh, don't worry, it, you'll be fine, okay? We will go through those steps. So now that you have the switch with a working iOS and it is running, uh, you are now about to do the scariest thing ever, right? Because we are formatting the flash. So the formatting the flash and erasing the iOS just installed is what we're going to do next because we're going to install a new iOS by that tar file, right? So, so we're going to uh, issue that command and it's showing right here. Uh, we're going to issue the format flash colon command and then that will ask you some um, you know conditional statements they can ask you like hey do you really want to format this and you're going to say confirm confirm and start formatting and then you'll get a message saying uh, format flash complete once it is uh, properly formatted now your switch have completely formatted 
uh, now uh, you do not have a Cisco IOS image currently running on your uh, switch. This is again really important point where you should not shut down your switch. You should not power off your switch at this point because your switch is completely naked and does not have a Cisco IOS image to boot up at this point. If you shut down at this point, you have to go back to what I have explained in my previous slides and <laughs> you need to use the serial to uh, install the IOS image again, which is going to be a pain, right? So make sure you don't shut down your switch at this point. Maybe use a, also a UPS, uninterrupted power supply when you are doing these things uh, so that uh, you know your switches don't get unintentionally uh, powered down. So at this point, you have a completely clean uh, Cisco switch. So we're going to extract your new iOS and CMS files onto the switch. To do that, we're going to issue the this type of command. So we're going to go archive tar because it's a tar file and we're going to say, hey, extract from the FTP, uh, sorry, TFTP server, which is we have set up on our previous slide at 1.1.1.1 uh, dot, um, then you're gonna give the, uh, the, the, uh, the whatever the file name as uh, associated with that tar file. So we're gonna say, hey, you know, please extract from this TFTP server and there should be a slash here, right here. So this, is, this shouldn't be a dot, this should be a slash. So that's a mistake. So there you go, I just corrected that. So here it should be a slash, it's not a dot on the like the last image because this is the IP address for the TFTP server and that is the file name. So the command you need to issue is archive tar slash extract TFTP colon slash slash and you give, give that code one because that's what we set up and slash not dot slash and then the file name. If your file is located somewhere else in the TFTP server, you had to put that, that path here before you issue in the file name as well. And then finally, you're gonna enter the flash command with the colon, flash colon, and that will flash this uh, tar file onto this switch. So your switch has an uh, iOS uh, and a CMS files after you have run that command. And you know that uh, because uh, it is, uh, now showing up uh, on your flash memory. So if you run the dir flash and the flash memory have that dot bin file as well as the other files that are associated with the dot uh, tar file that we just loaded uh, on the previous slide right here. So whatever inside this file is now in the flash memory showing up right here. So all of these files were in that dot tar, tar file. So we are almost done, but the last command we need to issue is to just to tell your switch to use that new iOS, right? So um, I always use the, um, uh, you know, the, the uh, Cisco iOS image I want to use, the name. Um, you can simply issue the boot and press enter as well because reason for that is this is the only image we have in this uh, Cisco iOS device. But to be safe, we're gonna issue the boot system flash colon and we're gonna give that, uh, you know, uh, name of that uh, Cisco IOS uh, image. In this case, this is the image name and we're gonna issue that and that what's gonna do, uh, th that will make sure that the switch gonna use that uh, Cisco IOS image to boot. So this image coming from that tar file we just extracted on the previous slide. So next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna test your uh, uh, configuration that we, the, the boot IOS image that uh, we have entered. So to do that, what we do is basically reboot your switch. Hopefully, everything will go smoothly, and then it'll tell you that you know it'll tell you that the, it booted on using that um, you know particular image that we just uh, have entered. So just reload your uh, uh, switch or reboot your switch, and you should be good to go. Booting a router from a USB flash disk. So what can you do with a USB port? So on a Cisco switch, uh, not all Cisco switches actually comes with the USB port. So keep that in mind. So some of the Cisco switches and especially newer Cisco switches do have USB ports. Sometimes two types of USB ports as shown here right here. The console port is also sometimes USB but it cannot be uh, used for this kind of purpose here. But we are looking at this USB port right here. Uh, in here, the USB port showing here right here as well. Um, but 
um, not all Cisco switches will have the USB ports availability. In that case, you will only have the serial option. But however, uh, the most modern ones will have USB ports. So what can you do with the Cisco uh, USB um, uh, ports? Well, uh, you can actually use that to flash uh, Cisco iOS images. That would be probably a better way of doing it and maybe a fast and easier way of doing it if the USB port is available. So uh, to do that, uh, you need to insert a USB flash disk uh, to that uh, port. So depending on the file system on your flash disk, the router may not be able to read it. So keep that in mind. So you can't actually, um, you know, use whatever the USB flash uh, this to just to connect to the USB port you need to make sure it is properly configured uh, FAT16 in this case and just need to make sure uh, that is proper formatted. Uh, keep in mind also I just uh, forgot to mention in the previous slide uh, the USB flash disk can also be used to backup your Cisco iOS images as well not only load Cisco iOS images but also backup as well. So from con uh, command prompt uh, you can have the router format the disk so if you're just trying to back up something to a empty USB flash dish, uh, you are able to uh, back up, uh, you know, format, uh, reformat your uh, USB flash disk, which just connected to the um, your Cisco router, but you need to make sure that you have saved any data uh, within that uh, USB drive that you may uh, want to save because the uh, formatting will erase it. So if you want to use the Cisco device, such as a router or a Cisco switch itself to format your USB uh, device or drive that you connected to the um, Cisco device, yeah, you can issue these commands uh, uh, shown here to format it. So you can basically connect the USB drive uh, and then you can format it uh, by you know uh, issuing the format command right here. So in this case, format USB flash zero. Uh, so the command is format. Uh, and then whatever uh, you, your drive name that shows up uh, for your router, uh, once you connected off router or switch, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to issue that one. So USB flash zero colon will do that. Um, if you're not sure what is the name of the USB flash drive, it's typically USB flash zero colon um, or maybe flash one colon, but if you are not sure, you can unplug the USB uh, drive or device and then re-plug it back on. And if you have the console uh, messages turn on, you will see um, a message like this. USB flash zero has been inserted or USB flash one has been inter inserted and say something like the that, uh, you know, USB flash zero or one or whatever contains uh, unexpected values in partition table. So that means basically it, it sees the USB device or desk, but the Cisco switch or router, in this case router, cannot uh, access any information within uh, that device, a USB device, because it is not properly formatted. In this case, you know it is the USB flash zero because it is clearly uh, listed here. So what we're gonna do in that situation, uh, we know the name of it, we're gonna issue the format command and then issue USB flash zero colon. So format USB flash zero colon and press enter and that would format the USB drive that you have just connected so that you can work with the, your Cisco uh, router. Uh, the format uh, will be uh, set to FAT16. Uh, uh, you can uh, actually uh, do this on a Windows machine or a, a Linux machine if you have it. Uh, have that you know that type of machine handy you can just plug it in and do that uh, there as well uh, you don't need to tell the Cisco device to uh, you know format your USB to FAT16 because that's what it's going to do that because that's what it needs but if you're going to do it on a different computer make sure you format your USB drive to FAT16 a convenient way to copy to your router so Files can be copied to and from the router using actual copy command now because you have a USB drive that is properly formatted and that can work with your Cisco uh, router. So the router sees the USB disk as a USB flash zero colon. Typically that, that's what it is, but sometimes USB flash uh, one colon, as I mentioned before, 
so depending on the router model and the port uh, either or uh, may uh, be the name of that uh, usb disk so the usb disk is immediately accessible once it is formatted and is visible when the router is booted to the ios so make sure your router has an ios because it needs the ios to basically you know uh, see that usb flash drive but once you have it you will see uh, you know uh, that uh, you know the information so the files can be copied from the router using our usual copy command so in here we are issuing copy usb flash zero uh, and then we're going to tell uh, you know we're going to figure out what image it is so we are not sure we can say uh, copy flash um, you know usb flash uh, zero and then hit the tab uh, with the f first couple of letters or uh, initial uh, uh, you know letters on that um, the the ios uh, file that we are trying to flash so if this is the only file that has uh, c18 at the beginning it'll show you that image will come up and then you're going to go flash colon and press enter and that will uh, flash uh, that uh, cisco ios image from your usb drive to your router right so that's what it's going to do booting the router from a usb flash disk so if the router ios is missing it will boot to uh, uh, ro uh, rom mon also known as rom mon rom on right so your router may not be able to see the usb flash disk from the rom on uh, a rom on upgrade uh, will uh, be required at this point so the rom on upgrade file can be downloaded from the cco or the Cis which is the cisco website using your network academy maintenance agreement so you, you should be able to download that uh, as a network administrator through the cisco and then you can uh, go through that process so in that case uh, in here upgrading uh, uh, rom monitor so the current uh, rom on uh, upgrade uh, for an 1841 router uh, is the file c uh, this file so this file is the one that at the time of the cisco net netacad made this slide set this is the most uh, uh, most up to date uh, rom on upgrade file so in the in this image the file is located on the usb flash drive uh, zero so usb flash zero colon is being issued and then uh, the directory listing showing up here and you see uh, the this particular file t5 file is located right here so that's the file right there c blah 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 one blah 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 blah, blah right so that's the one so upgrade rom dash monitor file usb flash zero because that is the usb file so sorry usb drive and then you're going to issue the the name of that uh, rom on file in this case c blah 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 blah, blah uh, dash 13 r dot t5 and that will launch us the uh, rom on upgrade as illustrated or rom uh, rom mon uh, upgrade as illustrated so in here it's going to launch that and it's gonna uh, upgrade your uh, rom on right so that's how you do it so you still can copy those files to your usb drive and just need to make sure you issue the right um flash command in this case upgrade rom monitor file usb flash uh, and the rest of the stuff and that will upgrade your uh, rom on booting the router from usb flash zero so there's nothing in the router's flash in this example so everything is completely deleted and no ios available and everything is gone so what do you do but in this example we also know that the ios uh, image is available on usb flash zero because we have put it there and the usb flash is now connected and with the uh, ramon upgrade uh, it is still visible as well uh, so what we can do by specifying the ios on the usb flash zero we are able to boot the router from this image so we can specify by saying boot flash uh, usb flash zero which because which is the usb drive that is connected to that router and then we're going to specify the image the ios image associated with that and now that will be a, able to uh, you know that would that command will be a, now uh, making it possible for this router to boot it from uh, that image in the usb drive so that's how you are going to boot the router from a usb flash zero so once you boot it uh, you will can run the uh, you know show version command or sh work command 
uh, which is a shortened form of the show version command and you will see that the USB flash uh, you know, uh, uh, drive um, iOS image is being used to boot up this router. So the iOS is still not in the router's flash. Remember that we are actually using the USB uh, located, you know, iOS, the iOS located within the USB drive to boot up this uh, uh, Cisco router. So the Cisco iOS is still located in the USB drive, not in the router's flash uh, yet. So curiously the copy command is not available in the romand uh, the uh, you know uh, that because uh, it, you know it is actually still located in the usb drive so this is like a temporary solution so you can restore the ios to the router so to do that you need to copy the iOS from the USB flash zero to the router's flash first. To do that, uh, what we need to do is we need to issue the command copy and then the USB flash drive name, in this case, USB flash zero. And then we're gonna uh, find the flash file name and right here. And then we're gonna issue the command flash colon. So copy USB flash, whatever, in this case, USB flash zero colon and then and the file name and then flash colon command. And that command, what's gonna do is it's gonna uh, save it to that uh, that uh, that iOS uh, file from your USB drive to your router. So in here they're asking, do you want to change the name of the destination file? Typically we don't change names, so we just press enter because that way it's easy to uh, find these images and make uh, you don't get confused with images. We just use the same image, but you can, um, uh, you know, change the image name if you like in this case we are not we're going to press enter and you're going to start copying and when the copying is successful the router is back in service with the same uh, cisco uh, ios image so that is the end of this brief uh, overview of uh, uh, managing and upgrading and configuring cisco ios images on cisco switches and routers if you have any questions or concerns about anything that we have covered, uh, you feel free to reach out to me through either sanuja.com website or through uh, my YouTube channel by leaving a comment. Mm -hmm.